Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless jesus said as a sign of his coming and the end of the age there would be an increase in deception false christ who will deceive many wars and rumors of wars nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom famines pestilences earthquakes christian persecution apostasy false prophets and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor as the labor progresses the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes as we get closer to jesus return all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense all of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. Another sick massacre at a small school. Police raced to the scene where six were killed including three nine-year-old children. George, it makes you sick to your stomach to see other students hurried to safety, the terror visible on one child's face through a school bus window, the president ordering flags be flown at half staff as we are learning more about the victims and a possible motive. This is a small church school, about 200 students pre-K through sixth grade. The doors of the school were locked, but that shooter firing their way in. Overnight, the Metro Nashville Police Department releasing this surveillance video showing the moments the driver of this car shot their way into a private Christian school. Once inside, killing three young children and three staff members in what police are calling a targeted attack. All units, be advised, we are under a mass casualty alert. The first 911 calls coming in at 10.13 a.m. Be advised, stay out of the general area of Burton Hills Road, Hillsborough Pike, confirmed active shooter. Authorities identifying the shooter as a 28-year-old female, Audrey Hale, saying the shooter identified as transgender. The surveillance video showing the shooter driving up to Covenant Presbyterian School just before 10 a.m., shooting out the glass inside these doors. She entered the school through a side entrance and traversed her way from the first floor to the second floor, firing multiple shots. The video also shows the shooter walking the halls. Authorities say the shooter was armed with these guns, two assault-style rifles and a handgun, two of which were obtained legally and locally. The first about eight or ten shots were very loud. Police say when the tactical team of five officers arrived, the shooter began firing at them from a second-floor window, hitting their cruisers. There's multiple victims down inside the school. Shooter is down as now as well. 14 minutes after that first call, at 1027, these two officers, Rex Engelbert and Michael Calazzo, confronting and killing the shooter. Guns are quick. They don't give you much time. So even in a remarkably fast response, there was not enough time. In the aftermath, these images, small children holding hands, evacuating in single file lines surrounded by law enforcement, terrified faces being bused to a nearby church to safety. The three students killed, all just nine years old, Evelyn Dickhouse, William Kinney, and Haley Scruggs, the daughter of the church's pastor. 
Three school staff also killed. 61-year-old substitute teacher Cynthia Peak, 61-year-old custodian Mike Hill, who was said to love his job and viewed co-workers and school kids as his family. And the head of the school, 60-year-old Catherine Kuntz, described by loved ones as a remarkable woman with a bright spirit. Strong and steady and hilarious. She had this amazing sense of humor. I can't imagine a better head of a school. As police now try to piece together the motive, authorities finding writings left behind in the shooter's car in the parking lot. I literally was like, I cannot believe this. I cannot believe this. One of the last people to hear from the shooter, Avriana Patton, an eighth grade basketball teammate who received these Instagram messages the morning of the shooting, including I'm planning to die today and this is my last goodbye. Patton contacted the county sheriff's office but didn't get a response until several hours after the shooting. Investigators searching the suspect's home, finding two more firearms described as shotguns and a detailed map of the school with entry points, even markings showing where the security cameras were located. Authorities say the shooter had no prior criminal history. A motive remains under investigation. There's some belief that there was some resentment for having to go to that school. Uh, don't have all the details to that just yet. Gun violence is the number one cause of death for children in America, recently surpassing car crashes. Second Timothy 3, 1 through 13. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power, and from such people turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Jans and Jambres resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapproved concerning the faith, but they will progress no further, for their folly will be made manifest to all, as theirs also was. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Horrific news out of Nashville today. Three young children, three adults are dead after a gunman entered the school through an unlocked school door and then opened fire before being gunned down by police. Now, it's a horrific, unconscionable act. Authorities seem to take an unusually long time to release the identity and other details about this killer, except to mention one unusual fact. What's unusual about this, this was a 28-year-old woman, apparently. That's an uncommon profile yeah. for these kinds of shooters. This is just rare. I mean, it is, you know, the, the mass shooters tend to be male almost in all instances. More than 90% of these shootings are carried out by men. Well, it turns out the killer's identity didn't quite match the preferred criteria of the media, which is usually white, male, they like it when they're angry at immigrants and others. Well, someone who is mentally unstable, perhaps, but still had access to an AR-15 style weapon. But this shooter wasn't just any old former female student at the school. She referred to herself as he slash him and was reportedly in the midst of a so-called transition process. Now, what treatments this individual was receiving or had received is still unknown. But all day long, authorities went out of their way to avoid releasing this information. Instead, simply referring to the killer as a 28-year-old woman until the question was directly posed by someone who attended the press conference today. She identifies her She does uh, ident identify as transgender, yes. Does she identify as a transgender man or woman? Uh, woman. 
Well, and then there was some question whether that was right or wrong or was misgendering. It was all confusing. And then we slowly found out that this may only be, been, be the beginning of this story. Is there any reason to believe that how she identifies is has any motive for targeting the school? There is uh, some theory to that. So was this a targeted attack? It was. We have a manifesto, we have some writings that we're going over uh, that uh, pertain to this day, the actual incident. We have a map drawn out of how this was all going to take place. Well, until we know more, we're not going to speculate any further, but we do know from its website that the Covenant School under attack is more of a traditional school explaining its mission for children, their pre-K to sixth grade, as an accredited independent Presbyterian school with dedicated alumni and a student network. We also know that the left is in a total frenzy, that Tennessee has joined a growing number of other states that have moved against drag queen events that involve children and that also ban sex surgery and puberty blocking hormones for minors. Extremists um, have latched on to LGBTQ fear. I mean, there's so much going on in our country. Um, and, we're, and yet we are seeing a proliferation of attacks on our community. Tennessee is actually kind of ground zero right now for anti-LGBTQ bills. Well, for some reason, with a declining U.S. economy and a disastrous foreign policy, Democrats have decided to make this a rallying cry. Now, they claim that conservatives are using this issue to start a culture war, yet they're the ones whipping people up into a frenzy, especially their fringe, to undermine parental authority and smear Christians and other traditional Americans as bigots who refuse to say a boy is a girl and a girl is a boy. Now check out ABC's Framing tonight. She's a former student of the school and confirmed that Audrey Hill was a, identified herself as a transgender person. Uh, it, state of Tennessee earlier this month passed and the governor signed a bill that banned transgender medical care for minors, as well as uh, a law that prohibited adult entertainment, including male and female impersonators after a series of drag show controversies in that state. Okay, you see where this is going, right? A deranged woman who calls herself or is beginning to call herself a man, and then, of course, overall celebrated by elites for doing so, took the lives of six innocent people. Instead of getting hail the help that she needed along the way. Our social media culture, Hollywood, even corporate America affirmed what would ultimately be a lie, that our genetic makeup can somehow be denied. It's all a vicious lie. And those who refuse to go along with this lie, just like the lives told during COVID, they're not anti-science. They are very much pro-science, real science, that is. So no, the angle will not allow the left to try to use this moment, this tragic moment of human suffering, to lecture the rest of America as they did all day long, starting at the White House. I just want to speak very briefly about the school shooting in Nashville, Tennessee. You know, uh, the shooter in this situation reportedly had two assault weapons and a pistol, two AK-47. So I call on Congress again to pass my assault weapons ban. It's about time that we began to make some more progress. The same people who believe citizens should have unlimited access to porn, weed, and abortion, frankly, even after live birth, they have zero standing to claim the moral high ground here on anything. The same people who encourage minors to have life-altering hormones and surgery on their genitalia and even begin transitioning without parental consent, they have done and are doing enormous damage to young people across the country. We have no idea how many are now desperately trying to reverse what's been done to them, but we can tell you from our own experience interviewing them, the numbers are growing. It wasn't capable of understanding and it was downplayed consistently. I will never be able to breastfeed a child. I have blood clots in my urine. I'm unable to fully empty my bladder. It's, it's been the most difficult thing I've ever gone through in my life. If my singing and speaking voice will never be the same after my time on testosterone. And no, we don't think thoughts and prayers are meaningless here. Our country, all of our country, needs it desperately. 
And we offer our fervent prayers for the victims and the entire Covenant school community. Congressman Tim Burchett, who represents Knoxville, Tennessee, called the shooting horrible, but says there is no need to ban assault weapons. I don't think you're going to stop the gun violence. I think you, you've got to change people's hearts. You know, as a Christian, as we talk about in the church, I think we really need revival in this country. The common thread is you've got somebody who's mentally ill and, and evil. This is what a nation looks like when they tell God they no longer want or need him. Since America will not recognize God as the creator of all things, follow his commandments, and give him the glory that only he deserves, he has left this nation to its own destruction. Proverbs 16.6 says, In mercy and truth atonement is provided for iniquity, and by the fear of the Lord one departs from evil. There is no fear of God in America, and the result is a society full of evildoers. When we are choosing to hold on to sin, rather than repent and change, God will not hear our prayers, as we read in Isaiah 1.15. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Proverbs 28.9 says, One who turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. America continues to do evil and disregard God's moral law, make up a God of our own liking, and continue to do what is right in our own eyes. America continues to lie, steal, blaspheme God's name, fornicate, commit adultery, look at pornography, covet what is not ours, and take human life. Jeremiah 30.12 says, For thus says the Lord, Your affliction is incurable, your wound is severe. As a nation, I think America may have reached the point in time where God will no longer hear our prayers because our sin is incurable. Romans chapter 1 tells us God has revealed to mankind that He is the Creator of all things, and that He has made it known to mankind that they are without excuse through His creation that He exists. God demands that we worship Him and recognize Him as the Creator. And when a society does not glorify Him as God, He gives them up to three phases of judgment. Romans 1 verse 24 says, Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their hearts. The first phase of judgment is an impure heart. The second phase of judgment is of the body, verses 26 and 27. For this reason God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. The third phase of judgment is in verse 28, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind, to do those things which are not fitting. First, the heart is rotten, then the body follows, and then the mind goes. The moral law of God written on the heart has literally been stomped out and replaced with cultural immorality. Immorality now goes in every direction. The mind is corrupt. People don't think right. They advocate all the wretched things and depreciate all the virtuous things. And what flows out of this pornographic, homosexual, depraved culture? All evil, verses 29 through 32. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. In these last days, society has not retained God in their knowledge, and in return, God has given them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. I am not a prophet, nor does God speak to me audibly. That being said, God speaks to me every day through His Holy Word, the Bible. If people would just open their Bibles, God would have a word for them. I believe God is warning the U.S. to turn from their wicked and unrepentant sin. The signs of Jesus' second coming are plastered all over the news. The seven-year tribulation is right around the corner, and the rapture of the church precedes the tribulation. So my question to Christ's followers is this. Are you ready for what comes next? One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready!
If Jehovah came back right now, would you make it? Hell is a real place, and I don't want you to go there. We've been reporting on the bizarre phenomenon that seems to be taking place not just in this country, but all over the world. Getting angry at God isn't going to solve anything. Don't put dad me, young lady. I just said you can see that boy when we get to church. This is not the way it's supposed to be. Breaking news. There appears to be a rash of catastrophic incidents taking place across the state. Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then Jesus said, I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Este ha sido una mañana muy espantosa de un catástrofe después del otro. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So robes and positions and titles and classifications and auxiliaries and departments and works and paying your tithe and paying your dues will not save you. We are still experiencing the aftershocks of the massive earthquake that have devastated this entire region. But if you want to be raptured, you must be born again. Since all of in South Korea, we're here one moment and going the next. You must be washed in the blood of the Lamb. It's over! We've all been left behind! <laughs> it's gonna be joyful for those who are raptured, but it's gonna be sad for those who are left behind. Life! Life as we know it! You swore to me that you were going to get yourself together and start coming to church with me. Not today, okay? I'll go with you next Sunday. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised Him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with Him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.